I'm back. I've been meaning to make this video for a very long time. Um, Y'all know I am crazy busy these days, um, just, you know, working and doing life. But um, shout out to the two Twitter followers that made sure to remind me to record. Um, as you guys know from the title of the video, we, well, we, yeah, we are going to be looking at all of the different um, Bible translations that I currently own um, by hard copy. Of course, I own um, other translations digitally, such as like the Sefer Bible. Um, that's just my cat down there. So if y'all see the plant moving, um, that's just my cat being extra. But yeah, so I have about, I think, 25 um, hard copies of different Bible translations. Um, some of them are New Testament only, some of them are Tanakh or Old Testament only, um, and then some of them are Torah only, which is the five, um, the first five books of, um, your standard Bible. Um, and so I do use all of these translations. I like some more than others, so there are some that I will use far more than other ones. Um, I will, I was gonna go in order, but... I might like save my favorites for last. I don't know, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but I have my three stacks of books that you guys saw earlier. I have them on the side of me now, and so I'll just be reaching back and forth, and yeah. So anyway, without further ado. Bible translation number one. This is my cute little Bible. So this is the first Bible that I ever bought with my own money. Um, I was in college and you guys know my, my story of how I kind of came to, you know, know the creator or just even be aware <laughs> that there is a specific creator um, who has a name and has um, words that he's given us. So um, it was, this is my first one I bought. This is the new living translation. Um, it, you know, I think I was told to like get this one. As you guys can see, I'm like writing all in it. So yeah, this was like my baby Christian days. Um, I don't read from this very often now, but, oh, it's very sad. But um, this was my first um, little Bible here. And I mean, I, I don't know that I would recommend it. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd recommend this. But it's just one that I had that's like near and dear to me because it's like where I started and it's, you know, like phrase by phrase. So, I'm gonna put all these books when I'm done. Second up, don't mind the cover, guys. I think the cover is very strange, but you know, it is what it is. Um, this is the Aramaic Original New Testament by Victor Alexander. I love this. Some of you guys have heard me. Um, Quote this on this channel or you've seen me on my um instagram maybe um post scripture like quote from here um i like this one because they try to keep like the purity of like some of the aramaic words for example um jesus is called ishu or ishua um and they refer to him as maria instead of christ um, and then Allah. So I don't know if y'all can even, can y'all see that? I'm trying to get real close. Ooh, it did focus. Hey. Yeah. So you guys can see right there, it says like Allah. So that would have been, um, the Aramaic pronunciation. So I like that one. We have the writings. Ketubim. Um, this is, my cat is crazy y'all. So anyway, this is um, Psalms, Proverbs, um, Job, the Song of Songs, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, First and Second Chronicles. That's what we call the writings in the Tanakh, the Ketuvim. I love it. Um, it's English, so it's easy to read, but I think it's very beautiful. Next up, this is a King James Version, but it's the Names of God Bible. Um, and so it will use Yahweh Sabaoth, um, Elohim, um, Kadosh, yeah, 
So yeah, it'll have in like parentheses Yahweh and Elohim where need be. And then I'm trying to look to see if it has like the Hebrew names of people, but I don't think so. Um, ba, ba, ba. No, because yeah, it says Benjamin. So yeah, it's just got Reuben. Yeah. So it's just got the Hebrew names of God in it. Um, you know, it's I like it. I don't have, you know, like it's it's nice to kind of have. I don't read from it too often. Um, this is the Protestant Bible, so it's 66 books. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those good things to have. This is my Koran Tanakh. It's full Hebrew. Um, if you guys can see that there. It's fully Hebrew. Um, and then it's got the tabs. And again, like this is just the... Um, the Tanakh. So it's got the Torah, Ketuvim, and the Nevi'im, so Torah writings and prophets in it. Um, this is from Koran, Koran Publishers. Um, remember that because I have something else that's one of my favorites that I'll show you guys later that's kind of connected to this. Next up, I have the Kaboris manuscript of the New Testament. So this is more like your ancient Syriac. Um, very cool guys. I found this at a used bookstore and I was like, all praises to the most high God. Um, they use that same, I don't know if you guys can see it. You guys won't be able to see it, but they use, um, Milta, they use Tebuta for heavenliness. Um, like, so they have a lot of like those Aramaic and like Syriac, Syriac words here. Um, that kind of help with understanding because, man, y'all, like, if you're just reading um, the New Testament with, like, a normal, like, Greek translation understanding, like, good luck um, because some stuff just does not make sense. Um, so, yeah, this is really cool. I like it. You guys can see the front. Here's the back. Next, I have... Half of y'all are going to be like, this is the only one you should read. <laughs> the other half of you are going to be like, burn it. Um, so this is the 1611 um, King James Bible. You guys can see it. Everybody can know. Oh, you have a certified text in your house. There's a lot of people that only read the 1611 King James. Um, again, I don't read from this super often. I kind of hang out with people who think that this is God-like he spoke and then it just like went onto the paper. Um, and so I like to have it around so I can see like what they're seeing, like exactly in a hard copy. Um, it does have the Apocrypha, so it's not just those 66 books. Um, it's not as many books as the Orthodox Church has, which includes, I think, four to eight more, but it is at least, you know, the Apocrypha is included. So that's nice to have it all in one spot. Um, very pretty, if you guys can see. So yeah, I think it's, you know, it's pretty to me to have. Um, but again, I don't read from it a ton, but I do like to have it on hand. Um, oh, let's see here. I didn't want to like put them on the floor when I was done. So I'm like trying to balance them in the chair next to me. Next up is my Aramaic Peshitta New Testament translation. I just got this in not too long ago. Um, so I haven't dove into it just yet but as I was flipping through it I'm like okay like you know like, that's cool it's probably not going to be favored in my mind above the the Aramaic original New Testament by Victor Alexander just because I do like to see like certain words keeping like just just keep it in Aramaic just keep it in Hebrew because when we translate it to English it just like loses its weight so um this one does keep I think just normal names, um, our Lord, our Lord, one will be taken, let's see, I'm trying to see if it has Ella, or, nope, it has God, so yeah, this is just complete English, so I'll look into this a little bit more, but, um, I think, um, the Peshitta, like, someone was like, definitely get this one too, so I grabbed it, we'll see how it is, guys. I don't like my tag showing. It's not my favorite. There we go. All right, moving on. The Dead Sea Scrolls. 
yes, I consider this to be like a Bible or an appendice to um, the Tanakh or um, Torah, what have you, New Testament. Um, so I actually think reading the Dead Sea Scrolls is super beneficial. I understand why people maybe not like don't want to bother, but if you ask me, everybody should have one of these bad boys in their house and then a lot of concepts that maybe seem crazy to you won't seem so crazy. Um, and then a lot of things that you do read in what most people hold as a canonized New Testament will make a little bit more sense. Next up, I have the beautiful linen. I think it's linen. Um, she reads Truth edition of the Holman Christard Standard Bible. Um, I was looking into this translation. I think it's just Christian Standard Bible now, not Holman, but I was looking into this translation and I actually think like out of, you know, all of like the modern English translations, um, this might be one that's more trustworthy than not. Just because I feel like, let me see if I can find the page that talks about how did we do this. By the way, guys, it's gonna be like a 40 minute video, so. Go grab some tea or something, some coffee, because <laughs> y'all know I'm not making no videos that are less than 20 minutes anymore. Um, or like I ever have. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, I can't find the page right now that tells you how they translate it or like what text they use to translate everything. But I'm pretty sure they consulted the Masoretic and the Septuagint and the BH um, text and maybe another one. I'm pretty sure they did, but um, you know, even in Lam Lamentations, they have it, Samik Pei Ain Zari Kof, like they have, if y'all can see, they keep that part, which, you know, I'm like, that's cool. And then the way that they translate some things is just, they, they kind of take out some of the things that we know, like weren't really in those original manuscripts, but got in there just for clarification's sake. Um, they kind of just don't deal with it and they just render it to what the manuscript says. So I appreciate that. Um, this will probably become my favorite, like, modern translation. Um, it's gonna, it, it would be contending though with the NRSV <laughs> that I've been kind of using for modern. So, okay, continuing. <laughs> Y'all, this is like a job. Okay, I'm gonna save that stack for last. Okay. Then we have, where'd this come from? The TBS. This is a full Hebrew Bible. So this is the Torah, the Tanakh, the Ketuvim, the Nevi'im, and um, the Bricha So the New Testament as well. It does not include the Apocrypha nor um, the full um, canon that the Orthodox have. But, you know, still, it's, you know, it's got New Testament in Hebrew, so... There you guys go, that's the New Testament right there, all in Hebrew. I like having this like all the time because people will swear like, this is what this says in Hebrew. Um, if this gospel is written in Hebrew, this is what the word would be. And I'd be like, nah, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so I do like having that there. Um, I wanna dig, my cat is so crazy. I want to dig into it more just so I can know, like, because there's there's different, like, New Testament Hebrew um, manuscripts, I think, out there, like, translating it to Hebrew. So I do want to get another one and just kind of compare because a friend of mine, um, he did bring up a really good verse that um, it had something in his Hebrew New Testament that was different from mine, and it was uh, the Gospel of Matthew. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what I have. Next up. Francais, my French Bible. I Do you speak French? Not really, no. I took four years of French. I've studied it on and off um, as an adult. But I can read it like, so like when you're reading something, you can like go a little bit slower and it can like, why is my cat like this? But it can like translate in your mind a little bit like slower, <laughs> I feel like, and you're not talking to anyone so you don't have to like really be quick on your feet. So yeah, I do like um, kind of using this when I'm just like, ooh, like let me brush up on my French or I'm like, hmm, I wonder how the French translated that um, from Greek because you know, Greek to French to English, that's kind of a process that a lot of our words went from anyway. So I do like to kind of, you know, see 
in regards to like translation, what's going on there. Keeping with the theme of different languages, this is my Arabic Bible. It's Arabic and English. Um, do you speak Arabic? No, not really, but I can read a little bit. Um, so again, I like to see, I mainly use this, so I like to see how they translated it in the, in the Arabic. And then I like to take those words and look at the Hebrew because, you know, maybe you guys don't know, but Hebrew and Arabic are closely related. Um, some words will be like exactly the same. Some words will be so close to the same. Um, and some words will just be totally different because Arabic has, I think like a thousand or something more words than Hebrew. But um, they're both um, Semitic languages, so they share a lot. And sometimes looking at the Arabic can help clarify the Hebrew if there's a question and vice versa. Next, I have this RSV. It's a Catholic Bible. It's got the Apocrypha in it. It is, I like this one because y'all know I got bad eyes. Um, I, I wear glasses, guys. <laughs> um, and so it is, y'all can see that print from here. It's large print. And so I like having it. Um, I like the NRSV translation, and so I wanted an RSV because I know that the NRSV obviously is an updated version of the RSV, and the RSV actually renders a few verses differently than others, and I like that. So I like to be able to, um, because sometimes they say, well, like the Catholic Church or the Christian Church just changed that because blah, 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 and really like, no, like that's just your NIV or that's just your King James version, like... The, the greater Christendom did not just make a decision here, um, but interpretation, you know, was a thing. So, yeah, I like to, um, I like to look into this. Sorry, I'm looking at a verse right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Next up, you guys have seen this one before, the scriptures translation. This is by the Institute for Scripture Research. It is um, a full 66 book Protestant Bible translation into English with some Hebrew words. It keeps the um, tetragrammaton intact, yod He vav He. Those Hebrew letters will be there in the text. You guys can see. I get super close you can see can y'all see yeah so right like there um so i mean i i think i like that i think i i think i like it but i can see i i understand why um if i were making a bible translation i may not make that decision um but i do like to see it it uses yisra and then l um it keeps the Hebrew names for people, which I like because I'm not going to lie, y'all. Like, when I have to, like, read the translated into English, like, like the Latinized into English version of some of these names, I'm like, I can't say those words. <laughs> but when I just read them in Hebrew, they're just, like, so easy to me. Yiptach, Yisrael, like, Shaboleth, like, Manamach. Like, it's so much easier for me. So I, I do like this because... It's easier for me to um, get through some of those like historical books, like Kings and Judges and stuff like that, that in numbers, <laughs> woo, numbers that are just like name after name after name. I encourage everybody actually to have one of these if um, that's something that's beneficial to you. Next up, we have the Orthodox Christian, um, the Orthodox Study Bible from the Orthodox Christian Church. This is the official. Um, translation that the church um, encourages is, encourages is, I'm tired encourages their faithful to use. It's got what many would call the apocrypha plus the additional books. So the Orthodox canon is actually wider than the Catholic canon. Um, so it's going to have I think four or five, maybe more additional books in it. Um, so yeah, I like this translation. I use this quite often actually. Um, and some of the study notes are actually pretty helpful. So this is actually another good one to get, I'm not gonna lie. 
Oh, okay. And then we have, I'm counting this as a Bible translation because it's a, um, it's like a interlinear Bible with a concordance. So Hebrew, Greek, English. You guys should know by now, I don't care about Greek. Like I just, I don't. And I'm, I know I should for like study purposes. I don't, I don't care. Um, but it's good to have on hand so that when people go, oh, what is the Greek there? I can not be like, I don't care. <laughs> um, I can actually figure out, okay, this is what the Greek is. And then um, I actually use digitally a he Greek to Hebrew, um, lexicon and dictionary so you can take a Greek word and point it to a Hebrew lexicon and then a Hebrew dictionary. So yeah, this has been pretty helpful. Um, the print is very small guys though, so um, just don't be surprised or anything. Um, but yeah, if you guys can see, the print's very small there. Anyone who's like into like serious studies should probably own that if, if possible. Then I have this bad boy, the Universal Bible of the Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, Ethiopic, Syriac, and Samaritan Church. So this has like almost, this has like m the most we're going to get in English um, from like the Ethiopian Church. This is what it has. And so like First Clement is in here. Most people have never heard of that New Testament text, but First Clement is in here. Um, there's Third um Third Corinthians. Um, the format of this is not very nice. Like you, like I'm on this page. I don't know what book I'm in. I just see chapters and verses. So that's a little annoying, but um, you know, you do what you got to do there. It's got Enoch. It's got, um, let me just read it. First, second Esdras, first, second, third, and fourth Maccabees. Um, letter of Jeremiah, the prayer of Azariah, Baruch. So I don't know where that cut off, so I'm just going to go back and say, Judith, Susanna, Enoch, Jubilees, First Clement, um, the Ascension of Isaiah, Shepherd of Hermas, the Didash, Apocalypse of Baruch, Josephus' Jewish War 6, 4 Baruch, and then we have Third Corinthians, Acts of Paul, and Thecla. Everyone should read that. Um, and then the epistle to the Laodiceans, or Laodiceans, yeah. Um, I think those are the only ones that are added here. Yeah, so this is really actually a good um, resource to have. I will warn you guys, though, you're not going to be able to figure out where you are mid-book. So it's just something that you're have to deal with. Or if you're like me and you know it's gonna annoy you till the end of all time, then taking an hour out of your day or two to write through every single page what book you're in so that you don't ever have to deal with it is gonna seem like a prospect for you. <laughs> so that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing is taking a couple hours out of my day or throughout the week and just writing in um, what, what book I'm in so I don't have to be annoyed with that my whole life. Because it is, it is a good translation to have. All right, guys, we're almost done here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. Um, one of my favorite translations of the Torah. Um, this is the Shochen Bible, volume one. Um, this is just the Torah, five books of Moses. It's a good translation into English. Again, it's like large print. They do use YHWH for Yohei Bahe. Um, they have Ehran is spelled with the H. Um, let me see. Israel is Israel. Let's see how they deal with Moshe. Um, I'm trying, yeah, so yeah, they use Moshe and Aaron, so they keep the Hebrew names of our patriarchs. Um, which I always love to see. And it's got really good study notes in here. Sometimes they'll have like a whole like little page. Sometimes it'll just be like a half a page. Um, I really like it. But yeah, it's got little notes in it here and there that are very helpful. And then it's got notes at the bottom that are very helpful. So I'm actually going to put this aside because I want to look at it this Shabbat. So I'm going to put it to the side here so I don't forget. 
another one of my favorite. So these are all like my tops right now that we're going through. So another one of my favorite translations of the Torah, the Torah. There you go. You guys can see there. It is, um, let me make this a modern commentary. Um, Union of American Hebrew Congregations made this. Um, I really like it. So you guys can see it's got the Hebrew at the top, then it's got the English, and then you have study notes there. Um, and those study notes tend to just be like very academic. Um, I don't think there's much quoting of like, it's not like a chamash where you're going to see like a lot of Rashi everywhere, but, um, they do have like some academic study notes down there and like cross-referencing. So I really enjoy it. Um, I'm going to put this to the side too, because I want to be reading from there. Um, the Shabbat. Then I have chamash. Um, it's the stone edition, so this will be the Torah, the half Torah, um, and um, the five megalos with commentary. So most of the commentary, I think, comes from Rashi. They may or may not consult the Rambam. Um, Y'all know I sat, like I am like Team Rambam all day and night. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there is definitely a lot of commentary with um, Rashi, Ibn Ezra, um, just all of the sages. It's got, it goes by Torah portion, so you get the Hebrew, um, then the um, English over here, and then the Hebrew commentary, full Hebrew page, and then the English commentary translation. So... This is really good for those of you guys who go through Torah portions. It keeps me organized and I like to have the commentary right there and I like to have the commentary in Hebrew so that I don't necessarily have to rely on the translation um, of the commentary. I can just kind of like right there is the Hebrew commentary and I can get like the gist of what the sages were saying. Keeping with Bing um, with the stone edition. This is, so you guys know, if you guys watch my old video, um, which this video is actually just an updated version, but if you guys watch my old video, you guys know I had a black stone Tanakh. I lost that bad boy in the move, I think. So I was like, you know what, like, let me just buy a new one and I'm just gonna get like the big version. So that's what I did. So this is my beautiful um, stone edition Tanakh. Um, again, so it's the Torah, the Prophets, and the Writings. It's Hebrew on one side and then English on the other. And then at the bottom, it does have commentary. Um, it's not gonna be like the fullness of the commentary that the Hamash has, but it does have like commentary or like study notes listed. I never thought I would be telling you guys this, but I do own a Septuagint. Um, if you guys know what a Septuagint is, this is the Brenton edition. Um, it's a Septuagint with the Apocrypha. So it is um, the Greek Tanakh with the Apocrypha. Um, this is what it looks like, that tiny little Greek and then super tiny English, but it's good to have you guys because as much as I'm like a Masoretic text girl, I do see where it's beneficial to have the Septuagint. It's something that our ancestors did spend a lot of time translating into the Greek so that we would have a freaking clue um, especially if we lost our ability to understand or speak Hebrew, like many of us have. Um, so it's really good to be able to have it in Greek, which is very easy to translate into English. Um, the Septuagint clarifies a lot of points sometimes. Um, even though it has its issues, um, it does help to clarify. So definitely get your hands on one of those. Second to last. This is the Harper's Collins Study Bible with the Apocrypha. Um, and I, yeah, it's just like the Catholic edition, just like the RSV, but it's the NRSV. I love this. Um, I posted about it a while ago, like two years ago when I got it. And I, I'm still like reading from it and loving it as far as like modern um, English translations are concerned. It does give you, you know, like a good amount of study notes. Um, it's not too biased, honestly, like when I read the notes, like I, I just expected to get like a lot of like, you know, 
Catholic notes and it's, it's, it's way more academic than that. So, um, like it'll even reference like the sages. Um, so I don't know. I just think the Jewish sages. So I think that, um, this is something I encourage everyone to get the Harper Collins NRSV study Bible. And then lastly, this is, I just got this in maybe like two weeks ago, or I don't even know, like, I think about like two weeks ago. This has been like my, this is probably my favorite Tanakh. I'm not going to lie y'all. Like I am enjoying it so much. I find myself just like waking up and being like, oh my gosh, where is like that Tanakh? I want to read more. I love the translation. It just, um, some places it's not very different, but in other places it's just different enough that I'm like, okay, like it's just beautiful. Um, this is the Koran Tanakh and it's Hebrew and English. And it's like in the order of the Jerusalem Bible. That's what it's um, pattern after. So if y'all can see Hebrew and English, and I just love it. Like it keeps, you know, it says Lord, it says God, but then it says Shemuel. I love that it keeps the Hebrew names. Um, I like how it's formatted as far as like when one of our patriarchs or matriarchs has a song, it's formatted like a song. It's not formatted necessarily like a poem. So it kind of reminds you like, oh, okay, like this is what I'm reading. Um, I don't know, just like a really, just a pretty little, it's a pretty Tanakh, okay? And so I love it. So anyway, that was a long video, you guys, but you guys got to see like my 25 or so, 30 maybe hard copies of um, Bible translations and common, like Bible study Bibles. Um, hopefully you guys, um, got a good idea for what's out there. If you guys are looking for something else to pick up, if you want to kind of expand, of course, um, I don't buy everything new because I know people are like, man, books are expensive. They are Jewish books, especially are expensive. But if you guys, um, just buy online or try to go to like used bookstores and look around, like find their religion section, go into the Judaism section, go to the Christian section and just look and see if they have different translations that would interest you. That's what I do. And sometimes I get, um, Bibles and stuff that are like $90. I get them for like 10 bucks. Um, and so that's how I'm able to afford and have as many hard copy translations as I do have. Um, and then of course, like you guys can always buy digital copies. There is some that I'm like, I don't really care to take up space on my bookshelf for this translation, but like I, I, I kind of want to have it. And so I'll just keep it digital if I need to buy it. The Bible app has a lot of translations on it and doesn't have all of them, but it does have a lot. So definitely utilize your resources. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm kind of sorry that it's long, but kind of not. So <laughs> anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. Let me know what your favorite Bible translation to read is below. And then I'm also pretty interested. Does everyone on this channel generally read from a 66 book Protestant Bible? Or do you guys hold to no canon? Do you hold to no codified canon, but with the tradition of the Orthodox Church? Or do you hold to like a Catholic canon, which is those 66 books plus the Apocrypha? Um, please let me know because I'm actually very interested in that. Until next time, Emirta Hashem, if the Most High allows. Bye, everyone.